Well, this is a video I didn't want to make. No country in Europe has done more to embrace the multicultural nightmare, I mean dream, than Sweden, meaning no country has opened its arms wider to Muslim immigration. And these days, every piece of news that comes out of Sweden is more and more disturbing. Now we hear that the government there is so determined to dilute their culture clean out of existence that they have actually changed the constitution without consulting the people. And you no longer have to be a Swedish citizen to hold sensitive or high government office, including national prosecutor, interestingly enough. And Swedes are constitutionally obliged to practice multiculturalism. In other words, it's now unconstitutional to uphold Swedish values in Sweden. Because the people who run that country seem to think there's something intrinsically shameful or contemptible about being Swedish. And I find this extremely puzzling, because all the Swedish people I've known have had every reason to be proud of who they are and of what their country is, or of what it was, and what it might be again one day if they ever come to their senses. If anyone in Sweden is curious about the kind of image their country projects to the outside world, I ought to tell you that that image has changed considerably in recent years. Formerly regarded as one of the world's most pleasantly crime-free and civilized countries, Sweden is now officially the rape capital of Europe, with twice as many rapes per capita as any other country, and 20 times more than some. What do you suppose could have caused such a fundamental shift in the Swedish national character? It's the last place anyone would have expected an epidemic of rape. It can't have anything to do with immigrant Islamic culture, of course, because nothing bad ever does. That's the culture that teaches young men that women who are not covered from head to toe are asking to be raped? Yes, that's the one. So realistically, there can be only one explanation for anyone who isn't prejudiced and racist, and that is that Swedish men must have something very seriously wrong with them. Maybe they should seek psychiatric help. Seriously, guys, you need it. You won't hear very much about immigrant rapists in Sweden because for years the government and the press in that country have been conspiring in a crime against their own people to keep them in the dark, not only in winter but in summer as well. Swedish newspapers are heavily subsidized with government money, so journalists routinely censor the news to ensure that immigrants are never portrayed in a bad light and that non-Swedish criminals are never identified as such, and this creates the cosy illusion that there are no immigrant rapists in Sweden. And this is very odd, because next door in Norway, that's pretty much all they've got. According to the Oslo police, all the aggravated rapes in that city over a recent three-year period all 41 of them were committed by immigrants from the Middle East and Africa and were characterized by gross violence. That's bad news for Norwegian women. But if you live in Sweden, you don't need to worry because there are no immigrant rapists in Sweden. Just ask any journalist. For those of us watching from outside, especially after recent events, it's hard not to conclude that we are witnessing the open theft of an entire country and all we can do is watch in astonishment and horror. If I was a bookmaker, I would no longer be taking bets as to whether Sweden becomes the first European Islamic state, because now it's only a matter of time. And if anyone still doubts that this multicultural lie is anything other than a euphemism for deliberate Islamization, you might like to know that despite Sweden's ravenous appetite for Muslims, more Muslims, and yet more Muslims, no country has deported more Iraqi Christians back to Iraq to be butchered like Christmas turkeys for the crime of not being Muslims, because in Sweden it seems only Muslims are entitled to full human rights. So you won't be surprised to hear, therefore, that Sweden is also a leading light in the new politically correct anti-Semitism we're seeing in Europe, and Jews no longer feel safe living there. Congratulations, Sweden. That's quite a double. Rape and anti-Semitism, you're carving out a real reputation for yourselves up there in the land of the midnight sun, or should that be the crescent moon? When it was reported earlier this year that Jews who have lived in the city of Malmö for generations are being driven out by, guess who, Muslim immigrants, the mayor of that city washed his hands of the matter with an equanimity worthy of Pontius Pilate, even stooping so low as to blame the Israeli government for his own moral cowardice. He said Jews in Sweden should distance themselves from Israel's actions if they want to avoid being abused. And that seems to be how things work in Sweden nowadays. To avoid offending the criminal, it's easier to blame the victim, and in this case adopt the Muslim terrorist position that every Jew is a foot soldier for Israel. 
One inconvenient fact, however, is that the Quran tells Muslims to hate Jews because they're Jews, not because of Palestine. It doesn't mention the Palestinians. And if Israel disappeared tomorrow, Jews in Sweden and all over Europe would still be harassed and abused by ignorant, hate-filled Muslim immigrants for being Jews and for no other reason. And then all you multicultural dimmies in waiting would have to find another mealy-mouthed excuse to look the other way. Fortunately for Jews, they've had a lot of practice at taking abuse and they've got fairly broad shoulders, which of course they'll need to carry around all those Nobel Prizes. Statistically, a Jew is thousands of times more likely than a Muslim to win a Nobel Prize, and there can be only one reason for that, can't there? That's right, Islamophobia. Clearly, the Nobel committees have an irrational prejudice against religion-induced ignorance, and they're obviously in need of some urgent cultural awareness and sensitivity training. Maybe the Swedish government could step in and take a moral stand expel the Nobel Prize from the country and tell it to relocate to Tel Aviv where it belongs. Admittedly, they would disgrace themselves and debase their country and embarrass the entire free world if they did so, but they're doing that already. So what's the difference? Peace. I can hardly say it. <laughs>